All right, thanks for the introduction. <coughs> All right, um, I'll start this talk by giving a simple explanation of what is meant by swipe error. All right, um, have you ever come across to this uh, situation? All right, in general, a swipe error can be as simple as swiping to the direction that was not meant to be. Uh, depends on the context of the interaction, swipe error can be tolerated. But however, in some cases, it may cause an annoyance and sometimes Embarrassed. What? Yeah, or we can. Yeah. Is it HDMI? Right, uh, sorry for the technical issue. All right, um, so in general, swipe error can be as simple as swiping to the direction uh, that was not meant to be, depends on the context of the interaction. Swipe error can be tolerated, but uh, in some cases it might cause an annoyance and sometimes embarrassment, for instance, um, in Tinder application where every swipe matters. All right, in Tinder, Swiping to the wrong direction may result in liking or disliking someone unintentionally. And this is a common mistake when using Tinder app. All right, people at Tinder acknowledge this and has come up with the Tinder Plus, which has premium feature to allow users to, sw to undo their swipe in the event of a mistake. Right, uh, swiping are a common touch gesture to interact with touchscreen. Despite of its implicity, users still make swipe mistake. Users are likely to make swipe mistake when they are in this attention demanding situation such as reading or replying text message or when they are playing game on a mobile device. So why are we interested in detecting swipe mistake? If swipe mistake can be detected, it can be used to support graceful recovery from error. However, this requires timely detection of an error signal come from sensor measurement that correlates strongly with a swipe error. In HCI, most of the efforts to detect and recognize interaction error were achieved through brain-computer interface. So, through this technique, when user commit a mistake during interaction, a specific signal called error-related negativity will appear in the brain about 100 milliseconds to 300 milliseconds after the mistake. So, researchers have used this signal to detect interaction error. While error detection using brain computer interface is intuitive, um, this technique actually requires uh, additional peripheral to be worn by a user. For example, this one. Wearing a headset like this may not be practical for mobile devices. and perhaps not like this one. All right, uh, in this work, our hypothesis is that when error is made on the touch screen, there is a physical changes in the hand grip and movement of the device. So these subconscious subtle flinches can be detected using contact and initial sensors. In an order to detect this error, we apply machine learning techniques on the sensor data. So, 
Therefore, our detection technique consists of an input for mobile device sensor, which are then parsed to the machine learning algorithm. And uh, we derive a swipe error model, which is then used to make swipe error prediction on new and unseen mobile sensor input. Here, we use two sensor input, hand grip and hand movement data. So in this work, we are particularly interested to find out if these two inputs, namely hand grip and hand movement, can be used to detect swipe error. We also are interested to find if this technique can be generalized across user and across swiping tasks. Given the two inputs, we are also interested to see if detection can be improved by combining both inputs. So to answer the research question that I just uh, mentioned just now, we ran a couple of experiments. And to do so, we designed a swiping task based on three classic connective tasks, namely flanker, stroke, and sort. So in this swiping task, the goal is to swipe, um, the goal is to swipe to and respond to the stimulus shown on the screen. Uh, for flanker, the swipe direction must, be, must follow what is being shown on the screen, but for stroke and sort, the task is to swipe to the right if correct stimulus is shown and swipe to the left if otherwise. Uh, we also use uh, another um, response, which uh, is a whole response, where uh, when we show unrelated stimulus on the screen. We give feedback in the form of correct uh, message after every swipe. The goal of the experiment to induce swipe mistake in the most realistic manner possible. So here are the examples of the stimulus that we use uh, in our experiment uh, for flanker, stroke, and start. For flanker, the goal is to swipe according to the um, middle uh, arrow, surrounded by the rest of the arrows. For stroke, the goal is to swipe to the right if the word matches the color, or swipe to the left if uh, otherwise. And for start, the goal is to swipe to the right if the number appears in the series, or swipe left if otherwise. So each swipe trial starts with a two second waiting time, uh, followed by the swipe itself. Here we increase and decrease the swiping time based on the number of previous correct and incorrect responses made by the user. A response feedback is shown for about two seconds after swipe before proceeding to the next swipe trial. All right, in order to collect hand grip and hand movement data, we use two Nokia N9s, which has been modified uh, to include back of device capacity sensor and movement Uh, movement captured using build accelerometer. We recruited 20 participants, which uh, 18 of them are right-handed and two of them are left-handed. We ran the experiment in three sessions, in which each session we collected 30 swipe trials. So therefore, we had uh, 220, 220 swipe for each participant. Uh, we recorded timestamps, acceleration, and backward device capacity reading from each swipe. So here is the N9 prototype that we use in this work. Uh, shown on the left, uh, there's a 20 capacitive sensor laid on the flexible PCB across the back and side of the phone. Middle image is the back of the N9 prototype uh, where we attach the capacitive sensing. And we use silicon case during the experiment to protect the sensor from dirt and grime from affecting the sensor reading. So for each swipe, we pull out the segment of interest from signal time series. That is one second before and after the response feedback. Uh, and then we normalize uh, this segment to eliminate any long-term trend. And from the normalized time series, we extracted two types of features, sensor total magnitude, which act, act as a proxy uh, to grip and hand movement strength and raw multi-sensor readings. All right, shown here is the magnitude of backward device sensor for four conservative stroke tasks uh, for one participant. As you can see here, the total magnitude increased gradually as we uh, show more stimulus to the user. We also see here that the, there is a spike in total magnitude, indicating that there are physical changes uh, in the hand grip around this time. All right, shown here is the average of swipe time series from all participants for both sensor. After uh, between one second before and after the feedback. So the vertical dash line is the feedback time, and the red and, red and blue lines denote the incorrect and incorrect swipe made by the participants. 
So as we can see here, the difference between correct and incorrect swipe are quite clear and uh, in strip task and for for back of device data. So it's also clear that the differences appear uh, at about different time for back device and estimated data. All right, from the collected swipe data, the goal now is to distinguish between incorrect and correct swipe response. So here we use random forest classifier to detect swipe errors. So to do so, we train the classifier with swipe collected on the first and second sessions uh, and test it with the uh, data collected on the third sessions. So we evaluate uh, our classification performance uh, to at different time after the feedback to see how uh, the performance varies uh, with the time. So we use four performance metrics, the area under rock curve, the accuracy, the false accept rate, and the false reject rate. So we begin uh, by showing the classifying result of using individual model. Uh, that is, we train the classifier using participant data from the first and the second session and test it using data from the third session. All right, shown here is the average from all participants, classification, classification EUC at different time after the feedback. Purple lines are the EUC for backward device data and the green lines are the EUC for uh, hand movement data. The red lines are the baseline EUC, which is the chance of getting swipes correctly classified. So, uh, in this work, we are particularly interested at the performance achieved at about 200 milliseconds because we believe it is possible for a user to make any explicit correction within this time, which makes the detection of the swipe error useful. Also, we can see here that the performance does not vary that much uh, with time. All right, here is the average classification result using pool model for all participants. Uh, to, to, to build the pool model, uh, we remove data from a particular user and uh, we randomly selected swipe data from the rest of the participant and test it against uh, with the data removed from uh, the particular user. As you can see here, the AUC accuracy and false step rate of the pool model for both hand grip and hand movement data give better performance compared to using just an individual model. However, the false reject rate for a pool model is much higher than the individual model. Next uh, is the average classification you see uh, from using model constructed using both data. Uh, in both individual and pool settings, uh, we can see that there is improvement when combining both data. This suggests that the estimated and back or device sensor contribute independent information about the error signal. And here is the average classification EUC of training on specific model and testing it with mismatch tasks. So for instance, training on flanker and testing on the SART and or training on the stroop and testing on the SART as well. So this is to show how well we can generalize this technique across tasks. Uh, as can be seen on the table, the performance is very good for simulator data uh, where we can see here EUC is approximately between 0.8 to 0.9. However, this is weaker for the back of device data. And interestingly, training with multitask model when we combine flanker, stroop, and sort together improve the test performance over training on just the matching task. This suggests that swipe errors are generated across these tasks. So uh, from all the results, uh, we ask this question, can we classify the swipe error automatically? Can we classify the swipe errors early? Yeah, we can do that uh, about 200 milliseconds. Uh, can we build classify that do not individually train model? As I can, as I showed just now, the put model uh, outperformed uh, the performance from using just the individual model. We so we also can improve the performance by combining both back or device sensor and SMS data. And lastly, can we generalize the swipe error? Well, from the result that I showed you previously, by combining all model that we built from Flanker, Start, and Stroop, we can uh, get better performance compared to just using the match uh, test performance. All right, uh, to summary, uh, using our technique, we show that swipe errors can be automatically detected using hand grip and movement data as early as 200 milliseconds after the feedback. 
We also show that the swipe error patterns are not user and task specific. However, it should note that uh, this study was done in a control lab setting uh, using swipe data from all small population. And finally, and finally, we show that uh, that using both input to train the model, we can get better swipe error detection performance. Thank you. Line up to the mic. Uh, meanwhile, please the next speaker to test the equipment. I think I will start with one quick question for you. Uh, are you trying to um, generalize the different uh, more gestures, not only swipes? Come again. Uh, for instance, to, uh, can you generalize your application to pinch gestures? For instance? Well, uh, that's uh, it's a good question. Um, currently, we just. Uh, looking at the simple swipe task at the, mo at the moment. But we also might look into like different um, gesture, like, like you said, let's get pinching or dragging, and uh, also probably scrolling. So uh, we already have the data for that, but uh, at the moment, we're just trying to keep the, trying like to model a simple basic swoop, um, just gesture, touching and gesture at the moment. So that's probably uh, some interesting things to do in the future. Right. Um, hi. Hi. I'm Purna from University of Notre Dame. Um, yeah, this is very interesting. Uh, again, I wanted to know how you would incorporate this, like after you detect the swipe error, how would you, or in what ways would you incorporate that information? Uh, wouldn't like a simple, like if if there is a provision for a user to undo whatever they've done, like the error, would that would that be sufficient, or would this give an added advantage over? So you mean by? Uh, you mentioned the Tinder app, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so you said now that they have an undo button. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think detecting the swipe error can, like? Give an advantage that the undo button cannot, or would it be better than that? Or? Uh, like not just put in. Yeah, like yeah, the I understand that. Agenda. Okay, uh, in our results, we can make um, a good prediction whether error has been made at about two hundred milliseconds. Okay. So that is way, way before the user acknowledged that the the error has been made. Okay. So for Tinder, for example, they have the undo button that um, can be which is need to be clicked manually after the user uh, realized that an error is been made. So in our technique, we can the, the focus is to detect automatically mm -hmm. rather than uh, initiate the user to undo the task. I mean the swipe or whatever error that has been made. Okay. Right. Does that answer your question? Yeah. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Well, um, yeah, that, that, that is a good question because uh, our experiment is based on purely on the cognitive uh, error rather than the uh, Tinder error, a specific error. So uh, that's going to be interesting if uh, we can do an experiment on the Tinder app itself where uh, we try like, to correlate uh, what kind of uh, signal that could be produced, you know, like from the grip or movement data when Tinder errors be made. So uh, I think that that is going to be like the next step, like when we focus on the specific application.